Hello. Good evening, everybody. Happy Wednesday night. Thank you so much for being here for our Bay of Tricks general knowledge trivia night. My name is Ali. I'll be your host this evening. Before we dive into any specifics, I want to make sure that everybody out there has joined our online interactive game website i think most of you are familiar with this but just in case this might be your first time playing in order to participate rather than uh answering here on youtube you need to join our online interactive website you can see the the link down at the bottom of the screen here online.bagoftricks.com once you get to that site, it's going to ask you for a game code. The code is TRICKS, T-R-I-C-K-S. If you click on the link that we provided on Facebook, you won't have to type anything in. It'll take you directly to the login screen. But however you get there, once you are at the game, you're going to see this screen asking you for four pieces of information. First and foremost, enter nickname. What it's asking for here is the name that you want to go by in tonight's competition. Second and third is the city and the state that you are playing from just for fun. And last but not least, your Bag of Tricks loyalty program number if you do have one. Go ahead and type that in. Once you've got all this information in, you'll see this screen that says the game will begin shortly, which means you're all set. And you can hang tight while we wait for everybody else to join. Uh, speaking of everybody else joining, let's see who's already here. Whoops. Uh, I see John Jay. What's going on? Hey, Kim Wheatley, Matt Whirlin. Yeah, it feels like forever. Abby says, hi, Abby. Woof, woof. From Taco and Pierre. Hi, Jess. Hey, Amy JK. What's going on, my friends? I'm going to tell you all about this game here in just a moment, but I imagine 98% of you know how this works. This is general knowledge trivia. These questions are about anything and everything. We're just here to have a good time, my friends. No charge to play tonight's game completely free. However, if you feel so inclined, there will be links down in the bottom this way. Uh, if you'd like to send a tip or a donation to uh, either Venmo or PayPal or Zell Quick Play, thank you to Team Florida. Thank you, Abby Wolf Wolf, for the donation. We appreciate it. Uh, my friends, if you have not yet, make sure that you check out in the Bag of Tricks online community um, the post about the upcoming in-person online community party that we're having. Uh, registration is going to be closing for that very soon. Uh, we need to do our due diligence and make sure that we get everything set on our end. So if you haven't clicked and signed up on the form, make sure you do that. If you have done that and you've received an evite, but you have not responded or maybe you clicked a maybe uh, maybes can be okay for now but if you haven't responded at all do that uh, because we're trying to finalize some things to make this party as fun as possible we're gonna have lots of great food lots of great drinks fun times for the adults fun time for the kids uh, August 21st so do check that out in addition to this big party we have coming up we also have trivia going on throughout the week all over the place. If you're in the Chicagoland area, you can play trivia in the city proper in Lincoln Park. Um, if you're in the western suburbs, we have trivia events all over the place. You can find that information again on Facebook or more easily accessible on our website. If you go to bagatrix.com, go to the event calendar. You can search by your city. You can search by the type of trivia you want to do. All sorts of fun things you can do there. Um, with all of that said, Anything I was supposed to announce? No, I'm trying to find the link. Oh, Gina needs the link to get to the game. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> Look at um, this coordination. Oh, I got it. I got it. You okay. good? No, not yet. I sent it to you. You got it. Okay. Good. Um, I, got it. So I don't know if you uh, missed anything. I think you're good. Gina's here. Taco's here. Pierre is downstairs sleeping in the living room. He looked like an angel, so we didn't want to disturb him. Uh, but Taco's here hanging out with us. Um, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. We still plan to do these online events at least every Monday when the internet um, uh, works with us. If not, you know, we can do it on Wednesdays like we're doing right now. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but again, as things open up, if you feel so inclined, we have trivia all over the place. We would love to have you out. If you're looking for private events, we're also doing those again now um, for your workplace, for your fundraising organization. Let us know. We'd be happy to help you out. But... Let's talk about what we're doing here tonight. Tonight is general knowledge trivia. Questions about anything and everything. Some of them simple, some of them tough. Meant to challenge you, but also to have a good time. So we're going to start out tonight with our very first round. These will be multiple choice questions. So I'll ask you a question. I'll give you four options to choose from. All you have to do is click on either A, B, C, or D. One of those answers will be correct. Three of those answers will be incorrect. If you click correctly, you'll earn yourself up to 150 points. If you answer incorrectly, you don't earn any points, but you also don't lose any points. And the reason I point that out is because you should always guess, even if you're not sure. Every time we play trivia, take a guess. No harm, no foul if you're wrong. Um, with all of that said, we're going to take uh, a look at our very first question this evening. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. This is our practice question. And what that means is this question isn't worth any points. This one is just for fun. This one, whether you get it right or wrong, does not make a difference. In the overall standings, this is just, excuse me, for everybody to see so they can see how the game works before we dive into it. Here we go. What is the name of your host tonight? What is my name? Is it Chris, Steve, Johnny, or Ali? Chris, Steve, Johnny, or Ali? All right, everybody's in. Let's take a look. One person said Chris Pontius. Three people said Steve O. Two people said Johnny Knoxville. Thirteen people said Ali. Great job. Sixty. 8% of you, so close, Crispy. 68% of you were correct. Uh, all right, here we go. The real questions are happening now. Question number two Which of these men was the first to sign the Declaration of Independence? Who was the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence? Was it Samuel Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, or William Floyd? Thank you, Maribeth, for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jess, thanks for the donation on Monday. I didn't get to say that because we didn't actually do trivia. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Do appreciate it. Maribeth, thank you for the donation. Team Florida, thank you for the donation. Oh, oh everybody's... How am I tired? I slept until 10.30 this morning. <laughs> Maybe you slept too much. I think I slept too much. Two people said Samuel Adams. Three people said Benjamin Franklin. Fourteen people said John Hancock. That's the correct answer. John Hancock is correct. Great job. Off to a good start. Question number three. Shrek was a huge hit in 2001, but could have been radically different. What comedian, before his unexpected passing, was initially set to provide the voice of Shrek. Was it John Belushi, Richard Pryor, John Candy, or Chris Farley? It's Herbie Hancock. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Oh, Herbie Hancock. This gift, though. Everybody's in. Two people said John Candy. One person said Richard Pryor. 16 people correctly said. There's actually um, footage of this out there. He did some some readings of this. Chris Farley was going to be Shrek uh, before he passed away. Question number four. In which Marvel anthology comic book series did Spider-Man first appear in 1962? Which 1962 comic book series gave us the first appearance of Spider-Man. Was it Journey into Mystery, Amazing Fantasy, Tales to Astonish, or Strange Worlds? All 
right, everybody's in. <gasps> Excuse me, three people said Journey into Mystery, Tales to Astonish, and Strange Worlds each. Ten people correctly said Amazing Fantasy. Amazing Fantasy. Great job. Question number five. Six Flags theme park started in what southwestern state and is named for the flags of the six nations that governed it? What state gave Six Flags theme parks its start? Was it Utah, Texas, New Mexico, or Arizona? All right, a couple seconds left. Everybody's in. Two people said New Mexico. Five people said Arizona. Correct answer is Texas. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Texas. Uh, it's question five, so it's time to look at the standings. Here's Taco for fun. Currently in first, the Angelicas. Hardy and Winnie in second is JMO. What's up, Team JMO? The Victors in third. Learn Fernigan in fourth. Hesera in fifth. Just Jess in sixth. A poo poo and a pee pee in seventh. Bark twice if you're in Milwaukee in eighth. Mom, Mama Lens is in ninth. Three Amigas is in tenth. We have It's Over Banana Can in 11th, Mert Orlin in 12th, Cookie Catastrophe in 13th, Justice Beaver in 14th, Tied with MRF, Mexican Romney Family, Distracted by Deer in 16th, Team Cream in 17th, KMV in 18th, and GG in 19th. That's yeah. Thank you, Amy, for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad you're here tonight. It has been a while. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah, uh, Amy JK, if you're coming down for the community party, i got to connect with you about bringing down some sazes. I was just thinking about that. I don't, Gina's not big on barbecue, but like you like barbecue sauce. And chicken. and chicken, that's right. You like barbecue chicken, just not the, the beef and the pork. Oh, the bird dance. All right, anyway, I'm getting distracted, and I'm really hungry. I haven't had dinner. That's what happens when you wake up at 10.30 a.m., I guess. Question number six. Which of these music <laughs> legends was not a member of the Rat Pack? Which of these music legends was not a member of the Rat Pack? Was it Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, or Bing Crosby? Everybody's in. One person said Sammy Davis Jr. Everybody else correctly said Bing Crosby. What a cool name. Bing. Bing. Although the website has probably ruined that a little bit. Bing. Um, sure. Anytime you couldn't find something, they'd be like, yeah, it makes Bing. sense. Bing. Can't find what you're looking for because it's a bad search engine. I know. It was a bad joke, is I what mean, it was. But it's not the same era as Bing Crosby. Question seven! <laughs> Bing didn't exist with. I'm saying if you were named Bing now. Oh my god. Question seven. Khaled Hosseini's first novel, The Kite Runner, is a coming of age story about two boys in what Central Asian city? What city is The Kite Runner set in? Is it Tehran, Karachi, Kabul, or Islamabad? It's a tough one for the literature folks out there. Let's see what you do. I actually read this. Or bless you. Thank you. Most of it, I think. All right, all right, all right. Everybody's in. Four people said Tehran. Two people said Karachi. Eight people said Kabul. Five people said Islamabad. The correct answer. Eight of you got it right. Kabul is the correct answer great job question number eight which of the following classic works of literature 
now has a title that has come to be widely synonymous with a paradox. Is it War and Peace, The Grapes of Wrath, Catch-22, or Sense and Sensibility? All right, everybody's in. Two people said war and peace. I could see where you were going there, but the correct answer is Joseph Heller's Catch 22. Catch 22. Question number nine. Four U.S. capital cities are named after presidents of the United States. Which one belongs to the southern state that changed their flag to this design in 2020? What is the capital city of the flag state shown here? Is it Madison, Lincoln, Jackson, or Jefferson City? Everybody's in. This is Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi finally decided they should change their flag. Probably going to happen a while ago. A while ago. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Something big going on in Milwaukee, huh? Uh, all right. Question number 10. Uh, you do need to look at the picture for this. Which anti-hero proudly emblazons this logo? On their chest. This is a fictional character. Which anti-hero uses this logo? Is it Luke Cage, The Punisher, Iron Fist, or Ghost Rider? Ghost? Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. <laughs> All right. Correct answer. Almost everybody got this. This is The Punisher. The Punisher. Great job. That's question 10. Here are the standings. The Angelica's. Artie and Winnie currently still in first, JMO in second, and Just Jess in third. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at, and we'll get into the next set of questions here in just a moment. All right, we have five questions left in this first multiple choice round. <laughs> Yoink. All right, question number 11. Who won Billboard's Top New Artist Award in 2020, despite the flat fact that they'd been releasing hit songs since 2016? Is it Lizzo, Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa, or Megan The Stallion? All right, 
everybody's in. Four people said Lizzo. Two people each said Dua Lipa and Megan the Stallion. The correct answer was William Eyelash. Isn't that what Dwight says? Yes. Or Rain says William Eyelash. Billy Eilish. All right, question 12. Scarlett Johansson is the top grossing actress of all time considering all the films she's been in. In second place is Zoe Saldana, who plays Gamora. Yeah. <laughs> Gamora. It, it was the most family-friendly gif I could find of Scarlett Johansson, uh, who plays Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy and also starred in what film? Was it Pacific Rim, Avatar, District 9, or Cloverfield? All right, all right, all right, all right. The Punisher sounds like a porn. Sorry, I'm just catching up on these chats. No center stage. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, 16 people correctly said Avatar. Avatar. All right, question number 13. Which of the following medical TV shows is not set in the city of Chicago, Illinois. Which of these uh, TV shows is not set in Chicago? Is it Chicago Hope, ER, Grey's Anatomy, or Sirens? Oh. Sirens is so good. I've never heard of it. It only got like one season. I think it was like a FX show or something. It didn't get the love it deserved. Everybody's in. Let's see. Three people said ER. That was set at the fictional county general in Chicago, Illinois. The correct answer is Gray's Anatomy. Uh, at uh, many different names for this hospital now, but it's in Seattle. Great job. Those of you that put C. Question 14. In the early 1980s, Miami was known as the drug capital of the world, mostly due to cartel activity, which cartel was known as? As the primary operator in Miami of all the cartels, who was the most famous? Was it the Medellin cartel, the Gulf cartel, the Sinaloa cartel, or the Cali cartel? Couple seconds left. Get those answers in. Oh, we are all over the place here. Uh, three people said the Cali cartel. Four people each said the Gulf and the Sinaloa. Eight people correctly said the Medellin cartel. If you watch Entourage, you'll learn all about it. <laughs> Question 15. On the classic television series, The Brady Bunch, what was Mike Brady's profession? What did Daddy Brady do for a living? Daddy Brady. Was he a cartoonist, an like engineer, an architect, or an accountant? What did you say? Zaddy Brady. What's Zaddy? He knew. No. You don't know what Zaddy is? No. Like a hot daddy. Hot daddy? Oh, he is a zaddy. Look at him there. <laughs> it's like a hot older guy or a hot dad. Or... I'm here for the zaddies. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Everybody else knew what zaddy was except for me. <laughs> uh, one person said engineer. Everybody else knew that he was an architect. An architect. Like, when I think of Zaddy, I think of, like, John Slattery. Who's that? Who, he's white hair. He's a man man. Oh, I know who you... Like, like, I like know Zaddy. who you're talking about before I even look it up. Oh, yeah. Right? That's like, a Zaddy. To me, yeah. I don't know. 
in the chat. Name your favorite zaddy. <laughs> oh, I've got I, here. Let me put my uh, my favorite zaddy in the chat. I don't think Mike Brady is a zaddy. I just thought that would be funny. I got my favorite zaddy in the chat there. Yeah, Zaddy Von Trapp, Matt. That's a great one. Who's your? Wait, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it in the chat. Question 16. Speaking of, arch <laughs> Speaking of architects, the architect of the Patronus Twin Towers wanted them to look like rockets. That's just some bonus information. In what Asian city would you see this skyline? The Patronus Towers dot the skyline of which city? Is it Taipei, Taiwan, Shanghai, China, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, or Mumbai, India? Was his name John Connor on Roseanne? <laughs> Stop it. No, it doesn't have to be a dad. It's just a hot older guy. Fashionable. <laughs> I'm not even joking about Ed O'Neill on Modern Family. He pulled down Sofia Vergara. That's a zaddy. He is not a zaddy. He got Sofia Vergara. He's a zaddy. He is not. Six John people. Hams Six people said Shanghai, China. Two people said Mumbai, India. Ten people said Kuala Lumpur, I Malaysia. And those people were correct. C was the correct answer. Great job, my friends. Uh, that's the end of the multiple choice round. Let's take a look at these standings. Currently in first, the Angelica's already in winning. Only seventy nine points ahead of Jamo, who is only not even for thirty six points ahead of the victors. It's a very close game right now. Taco couldn't care less. He is sleeping. Take yeah, you're right. It was Dan Connor. Thank you, Amy. Peter Griffin, <laughs> Ultimate Zaddy. Zaddy Stamos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's good. That's good. Okay. Here we go. My friends, next up is the picture round. And what this means is I'm gonna show you a picture and you're gonna answer. Uh, these questions overall, Ooh, this is actually a little bit of a tough round. Unless you're an art history major, I'm going to show you a famous piece of art. It's either a painting or a sculpture. I did paintings or sculptures. I'm going to show you a famous piece of art. You're going to tell me who created it, whether it's a painting or a sculpture. A last name is fine. Uh, just tell me who created this piece of art. So I'm going to show you it now. If this is your first time playing, the one difference is you have to type the answer in. So be prepared. You will not have multiple choice answers to choose from. You have to type the answer in. You have 25 seconds to do so. Here we go. Question number 17. Name the famous artist that created this piece of art. Who made this? You have 25 seconds. Type it in. Um, on the subject of Zaddies, like if Steph was here, she would say Christopher Maloney. Oh, yeah. You know. I'm here for Christopher Please, Maloney. Like, look on the internet. I think they're all too young. I feel like it has to be like a Maloney guy. Maybe there's. I'm gonna Google Zaddies, and I'm not even gonna worry about what it's gonna do to my search history. I'm gonna start getting the weirdest recommendations. The unstoppable rise of the Zaddy. <laughs> You're going down a... Uh, I'm going down a rabbit hole tonight, my friends. Hole. As soon as we finish trivia, I'm jumping on YouTube, and it's going to be like, top 30 zaddies you've never heard of. You're too young if you search. That's okay. Uh, let's Reddit see. rabbit hole. Yeah, that's for sure. Picasso, because it kind of looks misogynist. I'm here for that. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is Picasso. Can't spell Picasso without ass. Oh, all right. Question number 18. Name the famous artist that created this piece of work. Who sculpted this body? Famous Zaddies. Uh-oh. Tom Hardy? He's not a Z I mean, are they just naming people that have children? have to be a daddy. No, I'm saying, how are they making this conclusion that Tom Hardy's a daddy? Listen. Barack Obama? Yeah. Ooh, Justin Trudeau. Yeah. He could be my daddy. Yeah. Alright, everybody's in. 
Uh, let's see. It's the is the secret connection nudes. There's no secret connection this time. <laughs> Cowbunga, dude. Uh, the correct answer was in fact my favorite Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo. Great job. Question nineteen. Name the artist that created this famous piece of work. Titled "Tasteful Nudes." Yeah, fair, Lauren. This art is lewd. This one's better, my friends. No nudity, unless you try really hard. I don't think you can find any nudity in this one. Mm, that's pretty. Right? Don't look straight ahead. <laughs> Your eyes will burn. Everybody's in. This is Claude Monet. Not Monet. Monet. Great job. Uh, you guys are rocking and rolling in this round. Let's see if this is any tougher. Name the artist who created this piece. Who made this claim? I'm just over here trying to look up zaddies. What? Oh, the screen. Uh, there's a good gift for this now that everybody's in. Hold on. Oh, they don't have it. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, everybody's in. Let's see. <sighs> Correct answer was Edvard Munch. 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 In English, Edward Munch. Edward Nuk. Great job. Oh, cute. Final one. Question 21. Name the artist who created this piece. Who painted this? Do you know this one? one Gina knew them all. Gina like knew them. I could probably paint this. It's just like I'm busy. I don't feel like doing it right now. I could probably paint. I could probably do that. It's like not even a big deal. You're such a freaking liar. <laughs> want some bourbon? I do. Yeah, let me pour you. Just a little scotch. We're having fun tonight, guys. I know. Oh, that's enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just a quick uh, non-sponsored announcement. If you guys have a Costco near you, they they released this small batch. Uh, it's made by Barton, 1792. Uh, it's $18.00. For 750 milliliters. Uh, we drink a lot of bourbon, a lot of scotch in this house, and we really enjoy this one. We're going to pick up some more tomorrow. Um, but yeah, Costco just released, I think, four in a new line of bourbons that they're doing. Where was Zaddy Van Gogh? All right. Did anybody get this? Not many. Gina, you would have been ab among two people that got this right. Renoir, Renner, Renoir. Love Renoir's ballerina. Yeah, he he's tip he's most famous for his ballerinas. So I threw a curveball here, uh, but this was Renoir. Uh, with that said, let's take a look at the standings. Angelica's already and Winnie are hanging out at top. The victors are coming for it though. The Cookie Catastrophe moving up into third place. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. We'll get into the next set and last set of questions here in just a moment. I feel like Renoir is a mood. Like, you can feel. I think everyone knows the one with the, one with the red hat, too. What's the one? Oh, the guy with the red hat? No, the woman with the red hat. Oh, I don't know that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, my friends, we're going to do this last round of trivia. These questions are just like the first round in that they are random, all sorts of categories, all sorts of difficulties. But unlike the first round, you're not going to have multiple choice options. So I'm going to give you a question. You have to type the answer in, just like you've been doing for this art picture round. Um, these are worth 300 points apiece. You don't lose any points if you're wrong, so do take a guess. No cheating, no Googling. Keep this fair. Keep this honest. All right, here we go. Question 22. What is the smallest by area planet in our solar system? What planet in our solar system is the smallest? Do you know this one? Mm 
feel like I'm missing a great group chat here. Are you guys talking about I Love You, Man? Without American Summer. Oh. All right, everybody's in. Let's see. A couple of people said Mercury, Venus, Mars, Pluto probably would have counted. Uh, but I don't know if you've heard. Not a planet anymore. Goes back and forth, but currently not a planet. The correct answer is Mercury. Mercury. Great job. Question 23. Which British graffiti artist published a book entitled Wall and Peace? See how I tie all these questions together. Which like British graffiti artist published a book entitled Wall and Peace? Thanks, Neil deGrasse Tyson. What did Pluto ever do to you? Remember when Neil deGrasse Tyson had a whole fit about how, and I like NDT, but how he had a big fit about how um, in Titanic, when they showed them in the ocean, the stars weren't correct. Did you hear about this? No, that's so ridiculous. Neil deGrasse Tyson watched Titanic, Titanic um, and at some point, because he's famous, he gets in touch with James Cameron and he says, hey, just so you know, like the stars that you portrayed in the sky when Jack and Rose you know, Jack was freezing to death. Let me correct that. Rose was fucking fine. Um, he said the, the sky wasn't correct for the time and the place that they were. That's not the stars that they would have seen. To James Cameron's credit, when he reissued the film, when he uh, I think when they like uh, made it HD and they re-released it, he fixed it so that the stars and the constellations Whoa, were correct. That's crazy. Yeah, kind of cool. Right? All right. Anyway, everybody's in. Who is Banksy anyway? Any guesses? Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. My mom, I mean, my mom likes Legos. I don't think she does a lot of graffiti art. Uh, the correct answer is a crispy social. That is Banksy. Banksy. If you haven't watched the, I think, mockumentary, uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop. Did you see that? Uh, I think it's on Hulu. Oh, no, I never did. No. It's fun. If you know it's not real. Uh, great job. Question 24. The Devon Rex and the Cornish Rex are breeds of what kind of animal? What kind of animal has breeds called Devon Rex and Cornish Rex? Ooh, lots of you are getting this. Lots of guesses. Lots of different ways of spelling this. Everybody's in the correct answer. These are both cats. These are breeds of cats. The Devon Rex, Devon Rex, and the Cornish Rex. All right, uh, question 25. What opened in 1869? and cut 1,000 miles off of the journey from Britain to Australia, mate. What opened in 1869 cut 1,000 miles off the journey from Britain to Australia? Or Australia to Britain? couple of typos here don't worry if you're anything close you're gonna get points here all right i am looking for the specific name though this <laughs> it's not sue's canal but you are gonna get points for that i know what you're going for this is the suez canal the suez canal great job a little bit over half of you got that Final look at the standings before we finish this game out. Angelica's Hardy and Winnie have jumped to the front. Cookie Catastrophe still in second. The victors are now in third. Uh, this game is not over by any means. We have five questions left. 300 points apiece. That's 1,500 points up for grabs. Question number 26. 
who was the director of the FBI from 1935 to 1972? Who was the director of the FBI from 1935 to 1972? The only reason I always remember this is because they talk about it in Clue. Do you remember? Yes, but I cannot remember the name. Oh, God, I love Clue. My coworker told me about a game we should play. Um, Is it Clue? It's... Um, you look it up. Hang on. <laughs> the, the correct answer here... Uh, you know what? Everybody likes to dress however they want. The correct answer is J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover. The correct answer. Question 27. Which adventure novel features the Admiral Benbow Inn? What book are you reading if you were going to read about the Admiral Benbow Inn? It's a famous book. It's Betrayal on the House on the Hill. Okay, I knew you were going to say that. Um, Nick owns it. He would love to play. That seems like a game I would like. Yeah. Oh, Jess, I just saw what you said. We're not going to tell anyone else that. All right, everybody's in. Let's take a look. Ooh, you guys all had great guesses here. Not Moby Dick, not Narnia, not The Old Man in the Sea, not Gulliver's Travels. Great book, though. The correct answer is Treasure Island. Treasure Island. Island. All right, question 28. 28. What is the name of the French chemist and microbiologist who created the first vaccines for both rabies and anthrax? He did a few other things as well. But which French chemist and bi microbiologist created the first vaccines for rabies and anthrax? All right, everybody's in. Let's see what we thought. Munchausen, Pepe Le Pew. He is French, I believe. It's not Jonas Salk. Uh, I believe that was smallpox, maybe. Uh, the correct answer is Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur, probably more uh, famous for pasteurization. Another thing he would have a hand in there. Louis Pasteur. Question 29. What sport, still around today, was originally called Mintonet when it was invented in 1895? Hmm. By what name would you know the sport originally called Mintonet? I know Mintonet. Cheese with the little mites on it? Everybody's in. He's sleeping. Everybody knew it had a net. Maybe because it says mint on net. Uh, it's not tennis. It's not badminton. It is volleyball. Uh -huh. Only three people got that right. Volleyball, the Sorry, correct man. answer. Question 30. In which field are the Pritzker and Sterling prizes awarded every year? What field of work are you in if you win either the Pritzker or or the Sterling Prize. This guy, what an awkward gif. With his headphones around his neck. Yeah, it's a little creepy. Alright, 
everybody's in. Listen, I said I try to tie things together. We're going back to Zaddy Original Mike Brady. You have to be in the architecture field. Pritzker and Sterling prizes awarded for architecture. Ooh, somebody was trying down at the bottom, I see. All right, question 31, the final question. Premiering in 1966, what original TV series was created by Gene, awesome last name, Roddenberry? Premiering in 1966, what very, very popular TV series was created by Gene Roddenberry? Everybody's in. It is not I Dream of Jeannie, I Love Lucy. I'm going to watch I Love Lucy. The correct answer is Star Trek. Great job. Star Trek. Uh, my friends, that's it for trivia tonight. That's all the questions we have. So all we have left to do is look at the standings. Now, before we do that... Uh, just a quick reminder, we're going to do these online public events every Monday if the internet works with us. Otherwise, we'll push it to another night like we did tonight. We will have a special fundraising event coming up just about two weeks from tonight that I'm going to announce tomorrow. I think a lot of you will uh, like this event. I'm going to post about that, so keep an eye out. I'll post it in the community and in our main page, so check out that tomorrow. Until then, please do continue uh, to go out and support your local venues if you feel like doing that. We're doing trivia at a lot of them now in the western Chicago suburbs. Until next time, my friends, here are the final standings for trivia. Oh, actually, the last thing to say, if you have not yet, please RSVP as going or not going to the event on August 21st with the Vegatrix online community. We would absolutely love to have you there. We just need to know so we can start ordering stuff. We'd love to see you. Yes. Uh, here are the final standings. In first place, the Angelicas, oh, no. Artie and Winnie. In second, the Victors. And in third, not Gina, but Gigi. 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 My friends, that's all for tonight. So from myself, from Taco, from Gina, have a good night. Bye. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Love Take you care all. of each other. We love you. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.